left a little dirt DNA behind. I'm guessing this is probably like early 80s, late 70s. Walk behind leaf blower. Grabbed that at a yard sale last week. Paid 25 bucks for it. And of course, it ran the last time they used it. <laughs> Don't know when the last time they used it was, but you know, kind of makes sense. If it didn't run, you wouldn't be using it, right? Giant Bax is a decent machine. A lot of them get used commercially. This may be the case with this. We just don't know. I see the oil pressure has been disconnected. I, mean, I bet you they had a run issue and they were trying to troubleshoot what it was. There's no fuel in it. Whether they ran it out or it peed out due to a leak, we're going to find out. We see we get her up on the table. See if we can bring it back to life. Well, that's overwhelmingly slow. <laughs> this lift's electric. Good thing is you don't have to get the safety down from underneath it and drop it. All right, I'll spare you the. Uh, slow motion looks like the front broke out of the housing at some point and they made a bracket going from here to here uh, hopefully it's not torn out underneath not that we can't weld it let's see what else we got here. Well, that's a little kitty moppus too generally there's a door there's supposed to be a door right here that flaps bird's nest coming out of it rocks yeah right here's the door if that's even still functional kind of doubt it it's like something is missing I think the door's gone altogether. This would be a straight shooter, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I want to start it up in here. I think we might have to go purge it with the uh, air gun outside. Let's go see what it's got for oil in it. Sometimes they have a couple of places to go check. I know there's one here, but might be a dipstick on it, too. I don't see one. Can't see, can you? Let's see if I can get you in there. It's got oil in it. Oil in it. It's dark. But there's oil in it. Let's go give her a taste test. Yeah, it's pretty dark. I'm going to take a quick second to drop it back down, take it outside, and hit it with an air gun a little bit so that when we do fire it up, it just does not literally blow a dust cloud <laughs> inside here. Judge of all the crap that's in it. All right, so getting into it. Get the plug out of it. Give her a couple of yanks if you got spark. For an on off switch, too. There's one here. I would say up should be on. That is one carbony rich plug. But you had run issues in there running with the choke on. It does have nice spark, though, so that is a good sign. <laughs> Keep spinning it, too. It's such a massive flywheel that are on these things. Let's, I want to look and probably pop, pop the fuel bowl off. We'll take a peek inside there. And that'll give us an idea where we're going for, you know, what kind of condition the carb is in. I do have a fan on in the background. People are asking what that buzzing noise was. It's just a fan. It's hot and humid in here. So, I want you guys to be comfortable, so I'll turn the fan on. What do you think we're going to find? Eaten by mice? We're perfectly fine. Yeah, it was definitely stored outside. You can tell water got into the filter. Looks like two seven sixteenths. Can we get it with a shallow? Yes, we can. 
get that one blow to get to. You think that one is? Yeah, that one. Or the one I'm missing. <laughs> kind of jump sizes there. Let's try to. Let's try it with a metric. The metric that I'm missing. <laughs> you seen the theme here? Oh yeah. I thought that only happens with the 10 millimeter. Should be a breather hose. Right there. Goes to the crankcase. Any blow by it sucks it up back into the air cleaner. Now we get to the bottom of that. I'd say that is a 7 16 also. We'll bring a half just in case. So let's see what oozes. Sometimes you can tell by how the nut comes out. And <laughs> it's not coming out smooth. <laughs> let's uh, grab ourselves. Yeah, this is a. Uh, gonna be a fun one. It's got it's got big chunks. Use the float moves. I'd say we need to operate on that carburetor. But just for shits and giggles, you want to dump a little bit of fuel on it and give it a pull, see if we can get it to fire over. I do. You want to try dumping it down through the plug hole or into the carb? Let's try. Let me go right down the plug hole. This ought to kick some dust out. Let's move you to a better vantage point. And so I don't hit you in the head when I try yanking the pull start. Let's give it full throttle. Try to. I don't know what's what. We're going to leave it right there. Yeah. See if we can baby feed it. Good. I was worried about a little bit of knocky sound in it, but I think there sometimes there's I don't know what there is <laughs> on a chipper. They got the little knives that that flip up and down. That's not the case with this. Not too sure. I like the fact that the fuel line is literally a quarter inch away from the. Let's say it may have had a heat shield at one time, but there's not much left of it. That muffler for should probably end up facing this direction a little bit, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. I want to get that carb off of there. I think we're just going to go soak it. I think it'll make for a better outcome. Let's. Uh, is this one of the ones that we need to pull the studs out? Yeah. The studs have to come right off to get the carb off due to these on the end of it. I don't know if I have one of those funky sockets. We'll get it off of it one way or another. Though. Yeah, I have a feeling that fuel line is going to be so hard that that plastic fitting is not going to want to come off. Let's give it a shot, though. We'll probably end up just going to cut it with a wire cutter. And I don't have my private stash of carburetor stuff here yet. Yeah. Not that I can't go get it, but let's see if we can just do a little fine trimming.
those, those plastic barbs, that right there, they're pretty fragile, especially as they get older. You can tell like this one's been out in the sun too. Hopefully there'll be enough left that we can get it back on there. there and I have the tiniest socket I have. I grab the quarter inch ratchet. Let's see if we can get none of the crack loose for us. not the correct socket for it. I got screwdrivers that are the correct one. Sockets for that. Uh, what do you want to do? I really would like to get it off to clean it. You could try maybe double nutting it. I don't know if that's going to be enough strength. So what you do is you one on and you run another one back up against it. <clears throat> Let's go flip the first one over. That way we can get a wrench on each one of them. So I'm gonna do that and that. I'm gonna lock them together and then we're gonna try turning the whole thing. We get a couple of wrenches. All right. Let's see. New. I need a skinny, skinny. One. All right, we need ourselves an anorexic 7 16th. That's metric. That goes up to just shy of 7 16 Not saying that we can't modify one to become what we need. That's a seven. It's kind of fat. One of those might do it. There's one of those old sheet metal looking ones, you know? Like that, but in seven sixteenths. What's that? Metric. <laughs> Anybody on there? You don't see any sizes. I think it's time for the grinder to do its thing. That's a 716 also. What's the crappiest of them all? One's one's a snap-on. Maybe we'll save that. That's a snap-on. It looks like the fuller. The fuller is going to be lesser. All that and watch it doesn't fit. There we go. I'll leave the wrenches on it too. It's got those locking tabs on the back, might not be helping us. I flipped them around. The locking tabs was what was getting us. They don't want this carburetor to come off. That's just the first time it's been off too. It feels like it's almost loctited into the aluminum. They have a shoulder on them. I'll show you when I get it out. It doesn't clear the carb.
I was never going to get that with a socket. They got a shoulder on them. Right there. That goes in a recess, doesn't allow the carb to come forward. You can do the same, get the other one off, so you can get that carb off of there. Oh I'm letting the the back wrench is doing all the work. The front one's just kind of helping keep the two it tight. I'm not pushing with it. Just kind of supporting it more than anything. You're really just doing it all with the back, but it just helps you keep it square. Kind of like a diving board, you know? It's so long. idea. I've seen worse. The top of the car looks better than the bottom, that's for sure. You're going to want to get that out. Maybe with a smaller screwdriver. Really simple, there's not much to them. It doesn't have much in the way of jets. I would think it would have an air fuel mix on it. I'm surprised it doesn't. Okay, the main out of it. Let me get a correct screwdriver for down the center of it and we'll point you at the bench and set up in the air. Yeah, let's see if we can get that one out. Starting to gum up on the crap that's in the threads. Should probably throw some in there. Yeah, we're almost there. Now, nope. how about a little bit of gas? Just something to wet it. That's a gas oil mix. Yeah, I like that. Except for the very end. I don't want to break that. Right where the bowl threads were. That's where the when the bowl's held on. You see how crappy that is? That's what did the damage to that part of it right there. I am gonna go under the scope and throw some more oil on that. Go under the scope and under the vise and kind of take my time to get that out of there. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not, but somebody cross-threaded the bowl nut on there to see how the threads are. boogered up I wish I had more room I'd like to try to it's hard to say put a tap down inside it try to clean them up I'm gonna work with it a little bit more but you're working with such soft metals that the uh, motion tube jet can get just rip off the ends of it once you do that it's done you're not gonna get it out so yeah that's exactly what's happening to it I got the best fitting studio ever I can get in there but as you can see the brass is starting to tear it away Almost got it, but it's just not going to happen. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to soak it the way it is and uh, hope for the best. Yeah, and that's the area you really kind of want to get to. That's where all the fuel gets drawn up through. But 
there's a possibility it may be okay. We're gonna, still going to put it in an ultrasonic cleaner and let it get cleaned by itself, but it would have been much better if we can get that out and, you know, run a couple of uh, wire bristles through all the ports and everything. This is the ultrasonic cleaner. I moved it over from the other shop. This is a little bit left over. There's all the sludge that builds up in the bottom of it, but it's got a drain in it. So I drained it out back into the original cans. I'm just going to wipe that debris out and we're going to go on. It usually stays pretty good and people keep asking what I am using. That is what I am using. Just watch you don't put the temperature up too high. Because it is flammable. That's better. This is the same old stuff going back in, but the, the debris kind of settles out of it. She's pretty good in this can. You get the idea. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm taking a better look at it and it already has a crack I was talking about in that plastic piece. And I put my finger over the needle and seat and blow in through there and air is blowing right out through that crack. So that's why there was no fuel inside it. So I may have to try to come up with something for that or we may have to come up with another curb rotator. We'll throw that in there. Give it a case of the shakes. I'm gonna go do lunch. Right, let's go shut the heat and the vibes off. Maybe I put a little too much fluid in. I put three containers in. It makes it hard to grab the basket. Let's see how our stuff looks. Cleaner than when it went in. Float the bowl and the nut that almost wanted to fall through. Fried haddock sandwich. It was delicious for anybody who really cares. All right. This is going to happen before I get everything over here, but I went home and grabbed my stash of carburetors. Because we need one of these that are not broken. They also came in brass. I don't know if we could take one off of a straight, even how well they come out. But let's dissect the one that's on there and see what we have. Well, let's see how well we can get this one out of here. You see pliers like this? Pretty cool. They move linear. You can kind of grab on the whole flat of it. That wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad because it was cracked though, you know. Let's go see. If the next victim would decide to play as well. Yeah, that's the same carburetor, right? No. But that's why I have parts carburetors. There we go. I think they were saved. Remember which way it was facing? <laughs> I'm gonna go clean that up. I think it was probably straight down. I'm gonna eyeball that real quick over on the machine, but I'm pretty sure that's how it was. Yeah, it was straight down. Mm. That does not feel very good. Too bad that wasn't a little longer. We just put a hose right on it, you know. How does the whole thing feel about coming out? Hmm. 
So there's another bunch of you saying, why don't you just go get another carburetor? Because it's the challenge. So I have a metal fitting that looks like it's fairly close to possibly getting tapped on there. I see we go and hit it with a hammer, see if we could draw that on there. As long as it doesn't leak. Yeah, let's see if a little act of persuasion will help. Straight down. Going. Nice tight fit, too. I think we'll give it a little test. I think that might be our winning solution. Uh, let's see if we can put this thing back together. Have some, some success out of it. I want to clean up that area a little bit. Just car cleaner, brake clean. even have whoa you guys are too close back off a hair I even have I think a new bolt seal I think Flipped over right there. No. Yeah, we got a roll right there. Come on. That's probably too big. <laughs> Did I get the feeling the old one's going back on? Make sure that that bowl is going to get a good squish on it though. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Again, keep stepping on your toes. Sorry about that. Let's get our needle and seat back in. Looks pretty good. It's a pretty simple car. Yeah, there's not much to it. Dirt stain. Probably would have been a good idea to wash my hands first, huh? Capture the... Pressure you guys watching, that's what it is. Yeah. That seems fine. Now the question is Is the bowl nut going to be able to tighten down? Part of me wonders if that if they lost the correct one and 
It just does not feel right. And it had a, an, an adjustable on it. We're gonna call that good. We got this one to go do. All the passages were blown out with the air gun before you, uh, when you guys weren't looking. Let's be it. Where'd you put it? Put that back in. And then I think we can try putting it back on the machine. Putting some fuel in it. See if it'll fire up for us. Run without the choke, that's going to be the big question. Time. The other thing I should have brought over was fuel line. Forgot about that. That landed somewhere in the background, huh? Let's see. I believe we're going to be the same diameter. Yeah, we'll be fine on that. This muffler, though, I want to do something about that where it's sitting because we are going to have a few right there. I'd like to be better if it actually just shot straight out. Somebody welded on it right there. That might be a little bit of a trick to try to get it off. I'm going to put a uh, pipe wrench on that and see if we can get this thing to back off of here. Maybe we'll rearrange this while the carburetor is not there. Give us a little bit more room. That's not even touching the gym. That's not even doing anything. Hmm. Small diameter muffler would work too. Yeah, it's supposed to be a heat shield. Don't know if you can build off of that. that heat in that that is not going to come apart I measured it up found the OD of that I found a piece of pipe that has the ID that that should slip over so I'm gonna cut it right dead center of that probably add about yeah, about two inches we'll bring the muffler down to about here and weld it back up it's got a tapped in there for now let's go Throw the carb on there really quick and make sure that you're in good standings. Looks pretty good. The air box. I don't see that being any thing of an issue. That should work for a better product. I'm gonna go buzz this one while it's off and then we'll do our best. I'm gonna go clean that up a little bit, but do our best to uh, get around that and uh, it is a hammer fit, so we'll drive that on there best as possible. And uh, even if you don't get a weld all the way around it, it won't leak just because it's a press fit. And I say drive off. It's able to get all the way around it, which is good. Should be more than adequate. Let's well, all back together. It looks much better instead of having the muffler right, right there. Sandblasted the plug. Again, it looked like they were running with the choke on just because of, it was really black. It could have an oil issue too, but we're going to find out. We're also going to find out when we put gas in it, it decides to pour out of everywhere. It runs a fuel pump. And fuel pumps 
these fuel pumps are notorious for the two halves of the plastic over time they start to warp and they leak also this carb would probably run with anything over a quarter of a tank I figure the machine stays fairly level I'm trying to get you there hold on the guy's got big feet tripping over there so float bowl's there bottom of the carbs there it's probably at almost a tie but what's going to happen is when the fuel gets down to about this point it might skip around so they put a fuel pump on it worst case get rid of it altogether run the fuel a little bit on the higher side or if you're you know the running the machine on an angle it may sh on an angle it may show on you but it's getting ahead of us let's get some fuel in it and see if it stays in it's actually pretty clean inside but i want to give it just a shot of air to blow out any A, little, a tiny bit of dust coming out. See how much of a mess this gas can makes. Don't judge. Came with a free mower. Not a free mower. A gently used mower. I go, with the gas that's in it, so. Like the neck, with a dog chewed on it. Probably diesel. <laughs> yeah, it smells like gas. Let's let that sit for a minute. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, the pet is leaking. What a piece of crap this thing is. That's off. Does it leak in the off position? Of course it does. Right, we're going to leave that be for now. We're going to see if the rest of it will operate correctly. I'm going to prime it a little bit with the bottle. This might get a little windy. So we are on full throttle. Go for a little under full throttle, see how it does.
So it has no idle circuit. That's why it was bouncing off the, uh, uh, explain to you a second. I'm gonna go turn the vent on upstairs. Hold on. That's better. We got some air flowing through here now. So it doesn't have an idle circuit. You know what that means when it goes down to an idle, there's nothing there. There's no fuel going through. So you, you hear it just fall flat on its face. But once you are, it would rev up a little bit to the main jet, the fuel would get sucked back up and operate. Unfortunately, um, it essentially needs a carb. It's not feasible to clean it good enough to get what we need out of it. It'll run full throttle, which most of the time is when you run a leaf blower anyway. So I may, may leave it for here. I do not see any seeping coming around the carb. I mean the uh, fuel pump rather. That seems fine. And when I went to go hook up the low oil pressure, uh, oil switch, it shut right off. So we're gonna go change the oil, fill it to the top, try reconnecting that again. If not, we're just gonna leave that disconnected uh, because that switch is no good. This is probably just gonna end up being left here in my shop to use for cleaning. I have a, a little bit more square footage than I did before. So this will work as a big leaf blower. <laughs> Well, it is a leaf blower, a big uh, floor sweeper. And kind of go from there. Uh, give me a few minutes. I want to put some air in the tires and let's get the oil coming out of it now that's warmed up a little bit. Let's see what we get for oil. Sometimes you get a half inch extension on it. I don't think this is going to work in this one. No. And it's not, that's not Lily's dog dish. <laughs> this poor abused machine. I would say it was probably a landscapers at some point and they got too old and they got rid of it, bought a new one and then a homeowner bought it ran it for what they could run it and to the point where it was, it was probably leaking fuel from so many places. Whoever did that exhaust modification, I think it's supposed to come straight out with like a, uh, a pea shooter muffler on it, not the one that you saw on there, that mushroom one. And it's probably what overheated that fuel plastic and cracked it. That or just age, age could have done it too. Let's lean it towards us a little. Spiders coming out of it. Just making a break for it. Find that in my shirt later on. Some of those are uh, pretty nasty. Alright, we'll let that dribble out. Fill that back up. We'll fire it up again and we'll see if the idle shut off if we can connect that without Italian. Back two tires stuck here, but the front one is not, it has no tube in it, which is weird. You think it would, and all that rust in there is taking so the bead doesn't seat. So I'm gonna put some leather gloves on and try to get in there with a wire wheel, do our best to clean all the way around that, both sides, and then take some bead seal, put it on there and see if it'll catch up to that. Looking for some bad cracking. I don't see anything. You think they would just go with solid tires? You know? So another thing I left at home was my can of bead seal. But what I do have here, flex seal. Let's go give that a shot. I put the gloves on. You see? Yeah, you see. What a mess that's made. Yeah, good thing I put gloves on, right? 
<laughs> Let's let that tack up a little bit. And we'll get the air gun on it and try to get it to... Yeah. Seal up. I'm still filling with oil, letting that settle down, down in the funnel. Tightened up the handle, was loose, oh, it's flapping around. Let's go see if you can get some air in it. I've been 10 minutes. It's not exactly the easiest valve to get on. I used that stuff once before on the beaver. Insert joke there. <laughs> Stop her leaks. We'll let that set up. Finish off the top in the oil and see if we can fire it back up. Right, let's go fire it back up again, hopefully. Full throttle. That is full throttle. Probably some choke. Got no idle circuit. So that's what you see where it just falls on its face. So you try doing it. Oh, on the lower side, it just cuts out just because there's nothing there. But for what I'm gonna use it for in a garage, it is what it is. It'll it'll work. You turn it full throttle, it'll blow air. And that's the plan. And the oil pressure switch is working again now that I changed the oil. I found that happens quite a few times. Even though the level looks okay, I'm not quite sure what happens. If it just has crud on the back, it doesn't conduct across, I'm not sure. I actually never had one of these out, looked at the other end of it, but uh it is alive again. So I'm gonna to try to find a nut for that and hook that part of it back up. And uh, give it a couple minutes to make sure the tires hold air. Another thing I might as well address, it is missing the door. This lever is, is usually has a door that flips from one direction to the other and it kind of makes the air flow kind of more forward on the machine or straight out. That's gone altogether and I see weld here, I see you know, weld down in here again. It was used commercially and you know, beat the snot out of. This is broke away. So this is supposed to flip up and down, but the pivot point on this side isn't even attached anymore. This bracket should be welded on down there to up there, and then this chute you put uh, drag on the bolts, and you can just physically grab it with your hand and kind of flex it into different locations, whether you want the air chute straight down or, or further out. That I want to fix because I want that part of it to work. So I'm going to unbolt that. We'll see what it looks like and see if we get that welded back into place. And I can see it a little bit better. Looks like it again got ripped off once before. But that bracket is supposed to be down inside to that location. And it looks like they welded the uh, bar right on. Why would you bother welding it on? It's gone altogether. The flap isn't there. This is just part of the, the regular part of the chute, you know? Well, 
a little prep. Gas leak stop, that's a good thing, now that we're making sparks. Guys, got your welding helmets on. You don't put your fingers in front, just open a little bit so you can see through. Trust me, it'll work. Tack on the bottom one before I take the vice grip off. That was a crappy tack. Trying to do this where you can see. Not that you can see anyway. Some of you are asking why I'm not just nailing it right across. It just gives me a little bit better control. I run the welder a little on the hotter side. And I like to melt a puddle all the way until it almost blows out, let it cool off. And then I hit the next one, I hit the next one. Get just kind of better penetration. It's easier to do on thinner metal. There, one piece again. Yeah, so I changed up the hardware in it too because it was all mix match. Essentially, there's a bolt going in, a bolt going in. There is a nut welded on each side, but you want to be able to tension the bolt so it has enough drag on the chute, but doesn't unback the bolt. So what there is is also another nut that was run over each side of it to lock it from turning. So that's where it is. You notice when you move it, the bolts don't turn. So, be good. If you need, you can fine tune it a little bit later on, but that should be fine. This is all doing nothing. It's just a waste. This. Just for looks. Like the way it looks. Hopefully, I don't blind you with light. Right, we, that's hooked back up. The fuel stopped leaking. That's a good sign. Needs a good bath. I'm gonna hit it with the pressure washer, I think, next. But one thing I want to do before I do that, I didn't notice the muffler was loose on the socket, so I'm gonna try to clean that up a little bit, throw a little bit of a weld on there while I'm at it. Now that the carburetor is full of fuel, now we'll weld on it. <laughs> what are you wagging your tail about? What are you happy about? Huh? Get you. I gotta tie you up, keep you out of harm's way. 
Unless you start dragging the bench over, that might be an issue. Where's your cookies? Okay. We're almost done. We can go home soon. What's over there? You seeing a ghost? On that note. And it would say that piece of foam has lived past its useful lifespan. It helps with the vibration of the machine. Your hands don't get hurt over time, but I think I have a piece of, you know, the foam insulation you put on pipes. I might put that on there. Or just wear big gloves. The idol picks itself out. <laughs> now it won't shut off. <laughs> I guess that's not off. <laughs> it doesn't want to die now. <laughs> Or just didn't want to run, now it doesn't want to shut off. Well, that's cool. The idol cleaned itself out. It wasn't going to give that much hope, but it seems like everything has recovered and done exactly what it's supposed to do. No leaks. Tires are all holding up in air. All right. Wasn't looking that hopeful when that uh, barb was no good, but it seemed to have cured itself too. We'll bring her back in and we'll wrap this up. Well, I like machines that fix themselves. I'm not quite sure what the deal was with the idle. All of a sudden it was uh, responding to idle. And it, I'm not sure if it was fuel related or spark related, which one was causing it. I, I kind of was going towards the fuel side of it, but who knows. It all seems to work just fine, other than the fact that it doesn't want to shut off anymore. And we should just be able to deal with that switch without pulling the cover off. It should come right out of there. Should be able to get in there with a little screwdriver, yeah. 
either replace that switch or repair that switch. And that's about it. I'll come in tomorrow, make sure the air, the tires are still holding up, fuel's not leaking anymore. That's a good sign. Carb seems like it's doing fine. The barb is holding up well. So, awesome. It is back to being a serviceable machine. I'd say it's probably worth two, two fifty in the fall when leaf season is here. It's probably an eight horse. A lot of guys know how to read the tag. I'm not sure of that. Lily, you know how to read it? Go check it out. I know the help you are. The guys can probably tell from the tag what it is. All right, guys. With that, I'm going to go shut her down. I want to thank all you hanging out, working on some rusty junk with me. And uh, we're getting there. The new shop is uh, missing some things. But each time I come here, I grab a little bit more. Load the truck up with a couple of milk crates of stuff and then put it away for about an hour or two and then we get into something. So that is the battle plan for the near future. Eventually everything will be here and I won't have to go hunting for stuff like I did on this one. Well, I won't have to go hunting for stuff other than in the building kind of thing. You know what I mean. All right guys, with that, I'm going to shut it down. I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me. Just have a little bit of fun working on this stuff. Until the next one, I'll see you later. Want to go home? You want to stay here? Or you don't care as long as you're getting petted, right? Camera shot? Oh, the good spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Help this one. Can you shake your head? <laughs> there you go.